Now on the escalating drama in Greece um, is the focal point. That is the focal point of the G20 summit today in Cannes, France. European leaders talking about getting the country off the euro as an attempt to rescue the currency. The possibility of a looming Greek default hangs over the world's 20 most powerful leaders. Fears that a crisis in Greece will have a ripple effect on the global economy, sending countries spiraling into recession. The G20 now scrambling to fix the euro crisis. Joining me now to talk more about this is Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Journal and director of the Trends Research Institute. Thanks for joining us, Gerald. How much danger is the euro in right now? It's in great danger. The whole European Union is in great danger. Listen to the words of Silvio Berlusconi that he said on Saturday that were hardly repeated. He said it was a strange currency that has not convinced anyone. That's what he said. And then, of course, he backtracked right away. And all you have to do, Liz, is look what's going on over there in, in France as the G20 meet. If you want to see the levels of disconnect, all you have to do is look at the gala that they're throwing. It looks like an Academy Awards ceremony with the red carpets rolled out and the paparazzi shooting off their flesh. There's a total disconnect what's going on between the world leaders and what's going on out in the streets. The systems are collapsing. And, um, you know, right now they're talking about booting uh, Greece off of the euro. I mean, do you think that this is in the best interest of the eurozone to, to kick Greece out of there? It's in the best interest of everyone. The, we wrote when the euro came online back in 1999 that this was do, being done with the euphoria of globalization. Remember, before that, you know, in the late 80s, there was no China in the markets. You know, east of Berlin was behind the Iron Curtain. So there was this whole euphoria about a, a, a European union. And it was also something that looked upon by the older generations as a way to stop future wars. But in reality, all it was was a scheme for the bankers to be able to do big deals easier. And again, that's all these austerity measures are about. It's paying off the banks of the Belgian, the Dutch, the French, and the Germans that have made bad bets. But um, let's talk about the consequences of if, if Greece does default, there is this fear that it's going to set off this global recession. Um, wh what would be the consequences um, if Greece does default? It's bigger than Greece, and that's what you see. They're using Greece as the excuse for the whole failure. It's one of the smallest countries in the EMU. It's peanuts compared to Italy, which is in much greater danger with a much worse GDP to uh, uh, debt ratio. And then you have Ireland and you have Spain. It's, 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 it, what are they going to do? Give, give Greece another couple of billion dollars when they're half a trillion in debt? So, no, it's much worse than that. Look at the problems in the United States. It's a way to focus the problem on Greece when, in fact, the whole economic system is collapsing from printing all of this digital money that's not worth the paper it's not printed on. So whether Greek, Greece default on this or not, the crisis is not going to be solved. Um, well, I mean, the, the focus now at the G20 is to resolve this conflict. I mean, how important is, is it for them to come up? with a solution or I mean seems like it, you think it's not even gonna make much of a difference it's not they're gonna come up with another con game and come up with look let's go back you know just a week ago last Thursday you remember all the euphoria that they came up with a plan to solve this Merkel and Sarkozy congratulating each other the markets boomed up six percent on average by Monday the game was over all it is is a con they come up with a new line of baloney on how they're going to save the day. And the great minds are being brought together to solve these problems that they caused. So no, they're not going to solve the problem by printing more money. That's the only solution they have. Look why the U.S. markets went up today. 
because the news came out the Federal Reserve was highly disappointed that the economy is not turning around as quickly as they had hoped. So now there's hope for more QE3. So no, they're not going to solve it. Okay, um, a, a new development here. The Prime Minister of Greece, he dropped this referendum. Um, and it seems that there's one democracy telling another not to listen to their own people. Um, this obviously won't go well with the people of Greece. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this? Well, how, how ironic that the cradle of democracy has been robbed by the bankers and the politicians and the bureaucrats. There are, these are not democracies. I've said this over and over again. For all those little children out there that think they're living in democracies, the merger of state and corporate powers, by definition, is called fascism. And that's all this is. It's fascism, pure and simple. Let's stop this facade of democracy. Okay, Gerald. Well, the G20, uh, it seems like you don't think that they're going to come up with a solution. They don't have the answers. What is the solution now? Oh, the solution is to build domestic markets. This whole big line about globalization and unions has been nothing but a failure. And there's no such thing as, you know, sustainable perpetual growth. It's, it's an inorganic process. But these guys don't want to lose money. Look, when you and I make a bad bet, we have to eat our losses. When the bankers make a bad bet, they come out with this white shoe boy language. They don't want to take a haircut. They have to take their losses. The big lie, Liz, is that we have to save the banks. They don't have to be saved. The banks could fail. We need a contraction, and growth has to become more moderated than the expectant continual growth that they keep wanting to promise. And Gerald, we've been covering the protests that are going on over there in France. Um, it is a, this anti-globalization protest. And there, we've been drawing a lot of comparisons between the protests that are going on in France to the, Wall, the Occupy Wall Street protests um, that are happening um, here in the U.S. Um, do you think that people are now finally realizing that, um, you know, the system is corrupt, or, or, or what's your response to the protests um, that we're seeing kind of in solidarity with the Occupy Wall Street protests that are now arising it's in France? It's a trend that began a while ago, and we, we've been writing about it. It's, it's whether it was Tunisia, Egypt, Bahrain, Yemen, whether it's Syria, the riots in Greece, the protests in, in Italy, the ones that happen in the UK over and over again, it's the same story, Liz. Far too few have much too much, and way too many have much too little. These are, this is class warfare. It's as old as history, and it's happening again. So that's what we're really looking at over here. So it's all connected. This is an off-with-their-heads moment, particularly when you look at what's going on in the G20, with this grandiose gala as they're telling everybody else, pay more taxes, you're going to lose your pensions and benefits, we're going to raise your retirement age till after you die, and we're going to cut your services. So it's all connected. It's, it's class warfare, it's beginning, and it's really, we're looking at the first great war of the 21st century. Gerald, thank you so much for your thoughts on this. That was publisher of the Trends Journal and director of the Trends Research Institute, Gerald Salendo.